This video is going to teach you the different kinds of fatty acids and why one kind is different than the other. We'll cover topics like saturated fatty acids or saturated fats, unsaturated fats or unsaturated fatty acids. You might see this on the back of a label of a can of food and they might say things like polyunsaturated or monounsaturated. We're going to be talking about the broad categories of saturated, unsaturated fats. And we'll also go into trans fats and cis fats, if you've heard of those. Trans fats are the really bad ones you've probably heard about and you want to avoid. We'll talk about what those are and why you want to avoid them. Now the two big categories of fats are saturated and unsaturated. And what they're talking about when they say those two things are the kind of carbon-carbon bonds that are included in the chain or in the carbon chain in the backbone of these fatty acids. Now in saturated fatty acids, the reason why they're saturated, one way to keep that straight in your head is to think they're really trying to stuff as many atoms, as many connections to that bond as possible. They're really saturating it, hence the name saturated. They're really saturating that bond with as many connections as possible. So they have a, it's called a single carbon-carbon bond. Now unsaturated, like the name would suggest, this bond is really not saturated with atoms. They're not trying to pack as many things, as many connections around there. And so they have a double bond. If you know a little bit about chemistry, you know why this double bond can work, why this chemical structure still works. But for this video, suffice it to say that there's not as many connections. As you can see here, we only have four black lines around this carbon-carbon bond here. Up here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So the saturated bond is more saturated with connections, with black lines, than the unsaturated bond is. Now you'll notice up here with the saturated bond that these atoms, in our picture as well as in real life, are equally spaced. Each one of these degrees, the degrees of each one of these angles here is about 90 degrees. These atoms want to stay apart from each other. All these connections, all these green letters want to stay apart from each other as much as possible. You'll notice that that's the same case down here with the double bond. Even though there aren't as many connections, they're still as far apart as possible. So these degrees here are going to be about 120 versus the 90. And this presents an interesting case, and really where the difference arises from in these saturated and unsaturated bonds is because since we have not equal spacing down here, and you're dealing with a chain, there are different orientations that an unsaturated fatty acid can have as opposed to a saturated one. So when you see these R's up here in the saturated fatty acid, think of those R's as the rest of the chain. That's what an R means. So this is one chain here. Let's just think of it in your head like a, a, a metal chain. And this is the end of the chain. We're just looking at one link or one bond in this chain. Down here, however, we have one end of our chain, one R, but I haven't drawn up the other R, the other end of the chain. And the reason why that is, is because the R could go up here or the R could go down here. And you notice that if we put the R up on top, I'll draw it up here, its chain is going to be going this direction, and this other R, the chain will be going in that direction. You have pretty much still an overall straight line. It's, it's linear. It's, although, this, although there is a little bit of a bend here in this carbon-carbon uh, double bond, overall this structure is pretty linear. However, if we put our R down here, you notice that now it's shaped almost like a boomerang. And this, this, linear, this fatty acid will not be so linear in space. It's going to be much more bent, much more curved. And this is where the trans versus cis fats, the trans fats, ones you've heard about that are really bad, this is where that comes from. This configuration where these R's currently are is called cis. Now if the R was up here, and this is pretty linear, this is called trans, meaning that these R's are on opposite side. One way to think of it is on the opposite side of the double bond. Basically think of it that trans is more linear, cis is more like a boomerang. And why is this important? This is important because, so we'll draw out what this might look like. As we said, the saturated is going to be very linear. You have a bunch of 90 degrees. This is what your chain is going to look like. If we took this chain all the way through. Down here, I'll draw a cis first. We're going to have a straight line, and then it's going to bend. So let's say that would be our cis bond. Right there would be our, this bond. And for trans, you're going to have pretty much another linear fatty acid, just like our saturated. So right here you have a trans unsaturated fatty acid that's pretty much linear, and a cis unsaturated one which is not very linear. Now we go move over here to the cell. As you probably know, a cell has a phospholipid bilayer, meaning it has two layers of fat around it, protecting it. 
you can think of these as just full of these different kinds of fatty acids. Now, if we fill up this lipid bilayer with trans fatty acids, it's going to be very linear. We're going to be able to pack tons and tons of fatty acids in there. And it's not going to be very mobile, it's not going to be very healthy. However, if we had put a cis one in there, a cis pushes apart its neighbors. You notice that this takes up less space than one that has a huge bend in it. It pushes apart its neighbors. Just like if you're in an elevator with your arms like this, rather than it being in an elevator with your arms down, trans is going to allow for less mobility. So, since trans allows for less mobility, less mobility in your phospholipid bilayer is bad. And that's why a trans fatty acid is worse for you than a cis fatty acid. So here are your trans, less mobile, and here are your cis, more mobile. We want our phospholipid bilayers to be mobile, to be highly fluid, and did not allow a lot of grouping inside those phospholipid bilayers. Now your saturated fats are going to be up here and they're going to look pretty much like the trans. And for reasons I won't go into right now, uh, the saturated bonds, although they do look a little bit like the trans, they're actually healthier than the, than the trans unsaturated fatty acids. So in terms of healthiness, we're going to go with cis monounsaturated fatty acids as the healthiest. Then we're going to bump up here to saturated as the next healthiest and lastly these trans unsaturated ones are going to be your least healthy. And that's where you hear zero grams trans fat. It's because those companies are trying to avoid this highly packaged, highly dense, very bad for you uh, phospholipid bilayers and trying to make you more healthy.